In the Catholic Church, there are many leadership roles and titles within the official hierarchy, and it can be a little confusing to keep track of them all. Is an archbishop higher or lower than a cardinal? What's the difference between a priest and a monsignor? And where do deacons fit in all of this? In order to understand this issue, we're going to need to understand the sacrament of orders. Luckily for us, I was just ordained to the diaconate on Saturday, so I've got the inside scoop. This is Catholicism in Focus. <laughs> While there are a lot of titles within the church, it's helpful to remember that all of the official hierarchical positions fit within one of three categories based on ordination, bishop, presbyter, and deacon. A pope, cardinal, metropolitan, and archbishop are all forms of bishops. The pope is the bishop of Rome, a cardinal is a bishop selected to be an advisor to the pope, a metropolitan is an archbishop designated to be an advisor over several regional dioceses, and an archbishop is simply a bishop of a very large diocese called an archdiocese. For presbyters, or priests, there are what are called deans, pastors, and parochial vicars. A dean is a priest designated to organize and help a region of parishes, although he doesn't exercise any official intermediate authority. A pastor is the head of a particular parish, and a parochial vicar is the assistant to a pastor at a given parish. Some priests can also be designated a monsignor, a chaplain of his holiness, honorary prelate, or protonitary apostolic, but these are honorary titles that don't signify authority or responsibility. And finally, there are deacons, like myself. Once a part of what was called the minor orders and differentiated between deacons and subdeacons, today we are our own order with no distinction. The only difference one might find would be between permanent deacons, those committed to this order for life, and transitional deacons, people like myself, who plan to be ordained priests in the future, but our ordination is the same. So now that that's out of the way, what the heck do these things even mean? What do bishops, priests, and deacons do? The best place to start would be at the top, or the center, depending on your ecclesiology, where we find the bishop. According to the dogmatic constitution on the church, Lumen Gentium, bishops are considered the successors of the apostles and are thus marked with the fullness of the sacrament of orders, making them the stewards of the grace of the supreme priesthood. What this means is that, while priests and deacons also share in the ministry of Christ through ordination, they do so only through participation with the one who is marked with its fullness, the bishop, is the bishop who is the high priest, supreme teacher, and chief shepherd of the flock, and thus centrally responsible for the faith of the diocese. As high priest, the bishop acts as the principal celebrant of the Eucharist in the diocese, acting in persona Christi, or in the person of Christ, symbolizing the fullness of the celebration and the unity of the church when he presides with the faithful, surrounded by his helpers, priests and deacons. As the supreme teacher, it is the bishop's responsibility to ensure orthodoxy and faith in his diocese, instilling proper understandings of magisterial teachings, taking part in bishops' conferences to set agendas, and even compiling his own catechism if he wishes. And as chief shepherd, the bishop acts as the central leader of stewardship and governance, assisting pastors, setting protocols, making financial decisions, and even disciplining if necessary. Of course, the church realized even in apostolic times that the central leader could not have intimate contact with all the faithful, and so presbyters and deacons developed to be at his service. What's interesting about this threefold leadership model and what is commonly misunderstood about it is that it is not a strictly hierarchical model in which the bishop is above a priest and a priest is above a deacon. Even from the beginning, priests and deacons served different roles and reported directly to the bishop. And for the first few centuries, it was actually much more likely for a deacon to become pope than for a presbyter. So what did these two offices do? Like bishops, presbyters share in the one priesthood of Christ and thus act in persona Christi. They share in Jesus' threefold ministry of priest, prophet, and king and are exhorted specifically to preach the gospel, teach the faithful, and celebrate the divine worship. Unlike the bishop, however, the fullness of the priesthood does not rest in them, and so there are some limitations to their ministry. For instance, a priest is responsible for celebrating the mass, hearing confessions, baptizing, marrying, celebrating funerals, and anointing the sick, just like a bishop. But they are not able to ordain anyone and can only confirm someone under certain conditions in accordance with the bishop. The same goes for the role as prophets and kings. Like the bishop, they are responsible for teaching and shepherding the flock, usually in charge of individual parish communities, but their ministry must always be at the service of the bishop. To teach something against the bishop's instructions or to lead people in a different direction 
goes against their ordination. The story completely changes when we get to deacons, who, like bishops and priests, receive the sacrament of orders, only the ordination of a deacon is not to the priesthood of Jesus, only to his ministry. In this way, a deacon is still called to exercise the threefold ministry of Jesus, but this ministry is not exercised in persona Christi, and thus a deacon cannot celebrate Mass. Focused on the ministry of service, they are responsible for serving at liturgies, proclaiming the gospel, and providing works of charity for the community. Liturgically, a deacon can also officiate at weddings, baptize infants, preach at mass, preside at funerals, and lead benediction. What is also distinct about a deacon is that they are not bound by the rule of celibacy, meaning that married men can become deacons. And it's rare that a deacon would hold a full-time staff position at a parish. Given the emphasis on service, deacons are called to have regular jobs and families, offering a bridge between the church and world. And it's because of this great diversity that it can be tempting to focus entirely on what makes these positions different from one another, asking ourselves only what each can and cannot do. And that's helpful for sure. But it's also important to remember what they have in common. Bishops, priests, and deacons all receive the sacrament of orders, a sacrament that consists of oil and the laying on of hands and results in an indelible mark on their souls that can never be removed or tarnished. While the process and effect are slightly different for each one, what they share is most important of all. In the sacramental act, they bind themselves more closely to Christ and commit themselves to a life of service in the church. For me, that's what the sacrament of orders is all about and why I answer the call to be ordained. What about you? Thanks for watching this episode of Catholicism in Focus, made possible by Richard Stady and all the patrons on Patreon. For more, be sure to subscribe to this channel and check out all that this mission has to offer on its many platforms, including blog posts, Instagram pictures and videos, news articles, and much, much more.